and how much harder it is World Superbike than British Superbike. Right, see you the track. Bikes on circuit, 23 laps for the Motel FIM. It's the Thursday of Donington Park and I'm back using my brother for clout because it's his very first World Superbike race and I'm excited for him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just here using you for clout again. <laughs> what is it this time? Well, we're nearly doing a cribs here. I'll maybe save that for another day. Got all the trophies. <laughs> Can you lend me some? I What's your plot? This weekend. Yeah. This weekend, no pressure. No pressure. What? You want trophies this weekend? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, if I get trophies this weekend, I'm getting the first flight to Ibiza out on Sunday night. I think. <laughs> I'll come with you. Well, I've got to get back for runs. <laughs> What's the, on the agenda today? Pack the car. I've got a motorhome coming at 10, so I need to go to Donington. It's about half nine now. I've got actually quite a busy day today. I've got... <laughs> yeah, it sounds it. No, I, I genuinely have. I've got Yamaha filming, 12.30 an interview with Speed Week, quarter past one, Eurosport filming, something to do with my helmet, something at a quarter to two, five past three, Dorna filming, rider briefing at five, and that's it. I've got to go Tesco, I've got to pack the motor home, pack my car, you track actually walk. Got busy that is the most I've ever had to do. Uh, team meeting because um, everything's new with electronics and everything, so I need to understand what I'm doing. And yeah. I ain't got time for your filming, unfortunately. Right, see you later. Yeah, I'll bye. see you up there tomorrow. <laughs> bye. <laughs> nice car. Thanks, it's not mine. I get sponsored with it. Very fortunate. Buy my cams. Very, very fortunate. I'm not wearing knee sliders, don't worry. Oh, I thought you said I'm not wearing knee sliders. No? <laughs> I thought oh, you no. said I'm not wearing knee sliders. <laughs> You're just making an entrance at your World Superbike debut. Socks and sliders. Hello. You can chuck that in. Thanks. I'm weird and I like that. So socks and sliders kind of day, I just realised I'm socks and sliders. What? Uh, just redoing my sofa because someone's just coming. Sat in. <laughs> I sat on that side, so <laughs> don't blame no, me for that. Across it. You like, I think you like coming in because you know that I like it being tidy. And you just... It's payback. Explode. It's payback for what? I've never come round yours. Just live. <laughs> I've been carrying you for the last 25 years. <laughs> Look at the ankles now, they're like brand new ankles. Yeah. That's why it's cankily. Well, not like they were. No. I feel like I'm making you forget something here. Yeah. Have you checked upstairs? Yeah. I need to go get all my kit and stuff. Oh, oh show people your kit. Huh? Is this going in? I've got no leathers, so I've got, literally got nothing. It's just a kit bag. Oh. What right. have you got new? Everything? Uh, yeah, I've got different... Because I'm number 95 this weekend, I'm not number one, because Top Rack's number one. So I'm also not a World Superbike champion, so I can't <laughs> run number one. Um, so I'm back to 95, so I've got all my leathers with number 95, boots number 95. How many sets of leathers? Two. Two leathers. sets of leathers just because he's not number one. Yeah, but they'll get switched back to number one after this weekend. Oh, I see, they just changed the badges. Yeah. I'm going to break into this in a second, you can see what's in it. What does he take in his kit bag? That's the big question. Alpine Star inner boots. There are his new gloves. You see Alpine Stars have made these new gloves, they're like, I think that's Kevlar. And they're way more flexible and comfortable. You can see them compared to the old ones there. There's a lot more leather. Always coming quick. Just quickly, yeah, uh, having a look. <laughs> I'm just giving away some of this to my subscribers, I hope that's alright. What? There's nothing exciting in there. Beanie hat, monster, spare knee sliders, chest, chest protector. protector. And more boots. boots. How many sets of boots do you take? Oh, I need three. These I'm we aren't wearing these. These are for auction for um Oh auction Riders for, for Health. Yeah, it's uh, not called Riders for Health. Yeah. Two wheels for life. Yeah. At Silverstone Grand Prix. They'll probably go for a fiver. I might bid on them myself. <laughs> but Showy aren't here this weekend, so when I'm at BSB, Showy service my helmets, but 
for some reason at World Superbike, they don't go to every rack. I've got all my visor stickers, spare visors, um, tape, that's me actually, let's put that in. Visor cleaner from Muckoff. Rag, that's your job I think this week. That is my job, I'm chief helmet polisher. That's about it. Right. See the back of my car, it's complete. You haven't put I stripes, put stripes in, in it. this weekend, <laughs> I'm not that Shadow Mitch. That's it. As if by magic, it's like you planned that. Bing. Right, see you at the track. Well, actually, I won't see you today. I'll see you tomorrow morning. At the track. Well, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> I'm at Goodbye. They basically left my BSB bike back in the workshop and they brought a rolling chassis. So it came as a frame. The people that don't know what a rolling chassis is, it's basically a bike, a complete bike, except the engine and dash and electronics. On Thursday, Yamaha brought a uh, World Superbike spec engine and the electronics package to go with it. So dash all the wires, everything that, it sounds like nothing, but it was a lot. It took pretty much the whole day for the team to build the bike. So they did that. They got it running Thursday afternoon, evening. It sounded straightforward that it was just swapping the electronics and engine, but it was actually uh, a lot of hard work and took a lot of effort from um, the team <clears throat> and a few other guys from uh, Pata Yamaha and GRT Yamaha to get it going really. So it was uh, a big effort from everyone, but eventually got it done Thursday and then um, was ready to go out on track on Friday. So after FP1, um, I'd obviously ridden the bike for the first time. It was all a bit new to me. The electronics were completely different. Obviously we had traction control, anti-wheelie, um, different kind of engine braking strategies compared to what I'd have in BSB. So it felt a little bit different to ride yeah, the biggest thing I, I kind of learned after that first practice was how much to rely and trust on the traction control. So that was probably the biggest thing that I had to learn over the weekend. And then for the team, the biggest thing was trying to understand the, the engine braking really and trying to stop it because it was slightly different to what I have and felt in BSB. So yeah, I kind of struggled to stop the bike a lot during the whole of Friday and a little bit of Saturday morning. but. Um, my electronics bloke, Tim, uh, managed to kind of get it a little bit better for Saturday morning. There's no helmet service here this weekend for Taz, so his helmet service is me. So all of his visors came prepped before the weekend, like this. So the common tear offs on already ready to go. And then I have to clean his helmet and stick the new visor on. So I'll do that now because it's just before morning warm up. It's got morning warm up, sprint race, which is 10 laps, and then the main race, which is 23 later on. So like a, a corner to understand how different the BSB bike and the World Superbike spec bike would be is somewhere, well, a lot of corners are different on the exit with traction control, but a main one, an easy one, maybe to understand is onto the back straight at uh, Donington. Normally it's kind of a double apex corner and as you get into the second apex is it on a BSB bike, you start to open it and try and pick the bike up and get it on the fat part of the tire and try and get it driving um, but obviously being conscious that you don't want to high side the bike whereas the world superbike spec bike kind of heading towards that second curb you're pretty much trying to get to full throttle with more lean angle um, almost trying to get it to spin to turn and then uh, get it sent down that back straight really so it was that was one of the corners. There was lots of corners like that where I would be trying to pick the bike up and have less throttle, less lean angle on the exit of a corner on my BSB bike, whereas on the World Superbike, it was more lean angle, more throttle, kind of just relying on the electronics and 
my brain was saying to do what I got told to do off the other guys, but uh, my right wrist was, wasn't was sure at first. So that was probably the biggest thing, just trying to understand that. Again, that was something that I got used to as the weekend went on and felt more and more comfortable with each session. But on the flip side, the engine braking, which sounds straightforward, was probably more complicated and something that I was trying to figure out and had to ride slightly different to make it work. Engine braking is kind of self-explanatory that the engine's slowing you down. So um, as well as the brakes, you kind of want the bike to stop you as well with the engine. So maybe in a situation like if you're driving your car and you're coming up to a T-junction or a roundabout, if you just stayed in sixth gear in your car and you braked, it would be harder to stop unless if you went back to third, second gear, it would obviously stop you more. So that's exactly what it's like really on a bike. You want to change back the gears to make sure the bike's stopping you. So on the world bike compared to BSB bike, it's it, the electronics is slightly different. Um, it was more free. It didn't want to stop me as much as my BSB bike does and something that I've ridden for the past five years. So to then jump on this bike and it felt completely different. That's why I was having to change my riding slightly. I was using more brake pressure um, and probably the setup of the bike was slightly different um, to kind of cope with the electronics. So, and also in, in BSB, with the rules, if you were gonna say you wanted more engine braking in second gear, if you had five second gear corners on the track, you would have to have the same engine braking at all the five different corners. Whereas in World Superbike, if you had five different corners in second gear, you could have the engine braking more free in one corner, you could have loads of engine braking in the other. It, it can vary, it's called corner by corner engine braking. You can also have corner by corner traction. So it's not just set in one gear, in different gears for different corners or the same gear in different corners, you can set it up slightly different. So. Again, that was something that I was having to get used to. And also my electronics guy, Tim, was having to understand as well. Um, he'd worked with Magneti Morelli, what we were using uh, in previous seasons. But like anything, it always gets updated each year. And it was slightly different for him to use. So luckily he's quite clever and he was figuring it out as the weekend went on. But uh, again, the way we ended the weekend, if we could have started the weekend with that, it would have been nice for me just to to understand it a little bit quicker, but um, yeah, I should have had Assen wildcard, should have tested, so it is uh, my fault with those pesky ankle brakes. It's definitely dropping it. He's getting faster and faster because he doesn't want to drop it. <laughs> How's he getting over this bump? Of course he's getting over it. <laughs> he can't turn. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Mad Mark has made it to World Superbike. <laughs> also with World Superbike they have a slightly different spec tyre um, that has a bit more grip than what we have in BSB for kind of a shorter race distance. There's a, they have a super pole race, it's always 10 laps. No matter how long the circuit is, it's always 10 laps. So you can kind of get away with using this softer tire and you also use it for qualifying. Um, so again, that was another new thing that I had to figure out and learn. But to be honest, the tire wasn't so bad. It, I kind of, it didn't feel too different uh, to what I usually ride on. But the lap time maybe came a little bit easier. If I tried doing an outright, lap at BSB comparing to last year at Donington. Uh, I did a, a high 28, I think a 28.7 maybe. But with this qualifying tyre, I went a full second faster. Um, but also the electronics helped a little bit. It's not something at BSB, I kind of, I'm a bit of a slow burner. We qualify on our race tyre, so you can kind of get away with doing four, five, six laps on the same tyre and still improve your lap time. Whereas uh, I got told that you need to kind of do it on the first lap preferably and worst case do it on the second lap so I messed up a little bit on my second tyre um, I ran wide in a couple of corners on my fastest lap as well so and I was still way over a second faster than what I do in BSB so it was um, again just something that I was probably a bit new to um, but enjoyed at the same time and uh, yeah hungry for more now. Talked me through yesterday because I haven't actually spoke to you this weekend on camera Yesterday, what, yesterday or Friday? Well, in fact, they do Friday and Saturday. I haven't really got time. Come on. Well, you can do it whilst you're warming up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who do you think you are? I'm your older brother, I'm calling rank. I need to be in the garage at 10 on, keep minutes. You get ready and talk at the same time. I can't multitask. <laughs> Listen, Mark. Just say, just say 20 minutes to warm up, stick that camera up your ass. <laughs> Look at the help and support I get on this channel. This is staying in the video so everyone knows what it's like. <laughs> you just sit down, I'll shoot. <laughs> it's not your turn. Put your glasses away, they're not going up. If you put your glasses on, you're not getting on the channel. It's not too bad most of the day, but then later on the day it's Cheers. Cheers. Straight in the vlog. Oh, my knee. Oh, helmet. There you go. Are you coming with me? I'm going to go with it unless you want me to. No, Dad, can you take that? Dad, you go. So the, the other thing that was different that we have to BSB is we have launch control off the start. So uh, the first practice started with launch control. I haven't used launch control since I was maybe 16 or 17 on a Moto3 bike. And even then it's only a 50 horsepower bike. So jumping on something with 200 plus horsepower Launch control felt quite daunting at first, even though it shouldn't have been, but um, again, something that I was getting used to. On the start, it sounds completely different to BSB. In BSB, you just rev your engine to a certain RPM. Um, and it, in a way, it's quieter, but in World Superbike, when everyone's on launch control, the bikes are kind of, there's still limited revs, but everything seems louder. Um, again, it was quite weird on the, the first start, started when it was quite noisy, but uh, I felt like I got used to it. I probably enjoyed it more with launch control and um, everyone seems to jump quicker in BSB. Sometimes if you can start better or 
your bike revs or something or the way you can start you can kind of gain an advantage wearing world superbike you can gain an advantage if you react fast enough but everyone's initial jump seems similar so it's kind of harder to maybe get an advantage on someone else but yeah the first lap i enjoyed it uh again when you start at the front of a grid like i normally do in, in bsb maybe not this year but uh i'll try to do that at brands hatch this weekend but when you um start at the front you can kind of control where you're at a little bit but probably like i've experienced in the first few races in bsb and at the weekend in world superbike when you're in mid pack melee people might have had bad qualifiers that should be further up the grid or maybe people have out qualified or done better in qualifying than they'll do in the race so you're in this mid pack mess <laughs> and everyone's fighting for the next corner so it was quite funny on the first few laps but um once everything had settled down it was kind of similar to bsb in a way um the pace was obviously faster than what we go in bsb and than what we do in bsb and i was going faster so it felt more intense in that first race it was hotter conditions it was a longer race the whole aspect of the weekend was a learning experience probably something that i thought i'd get up to speed quicker than i did because i didn't understand or i didn't realize how much of a step it was on the electronic side um compared to what i've been used to so i enjoyed every session i genuinely loved riding in, in out on track at donington when you, you've got the weather like we did it was um yeah a pleasure to ride and then once i started to figure out the electronics and the bike was working a little bit better it was really enjoyable to ride and by the end of the weekend um i absolutely loved going out on it it was probably a little bit daunting at first but by kind of saturday afternoon sunday it was an absolute an absolute pleasure to ride and uh, a really enjoyable experience so a big thank you to everyone that made it happen Bikes on circuit, 23 laps for the Motel FIM World Championship here at Donington Park in the sunshine. A shout out to Harvey and John. Come out to watch Taz race because I can't get out on the grid, so I've come. 23 laps around Donington Park. All these people, these are all Taz's mates. Well, they are my mates as well, really. And this person here is Elliot and his girlfriend is the one that edits my videos now. So shout out to Holly who's editing these because I don't have time. So we're going to watch the first few laps from here then we're going to walk down to Craner. Can he do it? Thank you very much Larry Carter who sets the scene for us here for our final World Superbike race of the day. Starting good as we can do. Remember there is an update to that with Adam Kenzie being penalised in five grid slots and going backwards on the grid. Come on then, Down towards Redgate we go and it's a cracking start from the front row. The whole of the front row, top rack, Jonathan Ray and Scott Redding in towards Redgate. But it once again is the Pata Yamaha of top rack, Raz Gatioglu, who leads towards Redgate for the first time. I'm asking Jonathan Ray, Alvaro Bautista and Scott Redding. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.